it's the first time that anywhere in the world anyone's been able to predict the performance of trees while they are seedlings using just a, a DNA test. Hello and welcome to the latest edition of Wood Chat, a new series of podcasts produced by Forest and Wood Products Australia. I'm Sam. And I'm Victoria. And today we're continuing on our mission to highlight some of the important and fascinating work that's happening in the forestry industry right here in Australia by talking to the very people behind the initiatives. We'll be talking to Robert Southerton, Managing Director at Gondwana Genomics, who's going to tell us about an exciting world first breakthrough. From what we've been told, this is revolutionising the way seedlings are selected and bred, with a view to producing a higher quality log yield, and importantly, an improved return on investment for forest growers. Pretty exciting stuff. Today we're going to be talking to Robert about a world-leading genetic DNA testing system his team has developed that can predict the key commercial attributes of a future adult eucalyptus tree using just a single seedling leaf in the early stages of its life. Supported by research funding from Forest and Wood Products Australia and other key industry figures, this breakthrough could enable foresters to dramatically reduce breeding cycles and significantly speed up improvements to log quality. Hey, how are you going? It's, I'm uh, well, thanks. Sam and Victoria, we're just here to see Robert Southerton. Sure, he's expecting you and I'll escort you through the building. Thank you. Hi Robert, and thanks for taking the time to meet with us today and for offering to share your insights with our listeners. Hi and welcome to our facilities at Yarralumla. So for anybody who doesn't know, could you just tell us a bit more about Gondwana Genomics and uh, what you guys do? Sure thing. So Gondwana Genomics was formed in 2014. Um, we set up to commercialise research that the CSIRO had been doing into performance of eucalyptus trees. Basically, in a, in a nutshell, what we do is we take leaf samples from our customers, uh, we process the samples here, and we help them with their tree breeding programs. So the aim of that is to maximise the confidence in their, their breeding programs and make them uh, as efficient and productive as possible. So in terms of these latest findings, I guess it makes sense to start at the beginning and ask what prompted Gondwana Genomics to undertake this research. So. Breeding trees is, is extremely difficult. Trees grow for uh, a long time. They take a long time to display their, their performance and their traits, sometimes uh, five or, or 10 years. So you can imagine how difficult that is to just uh, breed through one generation of tree. You have errors that will creep into the process. You'll have change of staff. You'll have mislabeling and you have a very large environmental noise. Um, so when you combine all of those factors, it's extremely difficult to breed trees. And it takes a, it takes a very long time to, to see any results. So what we want to do is speed up that process. And we can do that through DNA testing now. So it allows us to breed with much greater accuracy. And it also gives us a window into the potential performance of those trees so we can get through those cycles quicker. So it sounds like there were some very definite opportunities there. You chose to conduct this research using eucalyptus globulus or blue gum trees and eucalyptus nitens or shining gum trees. When it comes to breeding, how did these trees differ from conventional crops? If you were to consider uh, something like wheat or sunflowers, there's a short breeding cycle for those. You can get through maybe two or three breeding cycles in a year. You can reduce the errors, therefore, uh, and you can really maximise your gains. So as I mentioned before with trees, it's, it's very, very difficult. So can you tell us a bit about the process? Where do you even begin with a research project like this? Where to begin? Well, uh, let me introduce you to uh, Bala Fama. He is the lead researcher on, on this project. We needed a system whereby we can process large number of samples and the per sample cost needed to be lower. We have developed a system whereby we can process more than 1,000 samples per day. We have genotyped more than 
11,000 samples as part of this project. With our new DNA extraction method, we only use a small disk from one leaf and we get the DNA out of that. So this is very crucial when you want to apply in commercial breeding because when you are screening the seedlings, seedlings will only have a small number of leaves. Then what can you tell from that DNA? We can determine several things. In traditional breeding programs, there could be errors creeping into the identification of those parents during the course of breeding. So the DNA test will identify and we can correct for those pedigree errors using our technology. And the second one is actually applying in the breeding programs to make selections while the trees are still the seedlings. We use the parental data to predict the performance of the children of the parents. Okay, so what exactly is it that you're looking for at this point? We looked at the markers that we already have for pulp yield and the tree growth. And um, we also identified the new markers for wood density. And we were able to use all these markers together to predict the performance of the parents for these three different traits. And did the results come as a surprise to you or were they what you were expecting? We were first of all we were surprised with those high accurate results. And generally you find such results in animal breeding or in crop breeding. But in, in forestry breeding, this is not very common. So we went back and checked our results and confirmed that the, there are no errors in our analysis. And we have given our industry partners the data. Then they identified how accurate our, our predictions are by correlating our data with the data that they already have. Robert suggested contacting Andrew Jacobs, Research and Innovations Manager at Industry Partner Forico, to get his perspective on the research. Hi Sam, how are you today? Oh, I'm not bad, thank you. Um, I was given your details by, uh, by Robert and uh, he had mentioned that you might be able to tell us a bit more about your involvement with the uh, Gondwana Genomics project. Yeah, well, it's been a pretty big project for us. Obviously, um, there have been a number of other industry partners involved, but um, our involvement really has been to screen 7,500 plants within our eucalyptus nightmares program. Mm -hmm. Pretty big commitment um, on our behalf yeah. in terms of numbers. What kind of time period would we be looking at? Like, how long did that take you guys? Well, it required us to obviously sample plants from a range of different sources. We sampled uh, 5,000 plants from our nursery, so seedlings. Um, so that was fairly straightforward. They're all very close together. But as part of this project, we did also assess the DNA from plants in our seed orchards, in our arboretum, which are mature trees and spread out. So that was quite time consuming plants from, from one of our commercial plantings, uh, which again also required a fair bit of time and other day's work to, to collect those samples. There's a little bit of a backstory too, Sam, in that part of this project obviously was developing the technology and that required that we had traits related to wood quality that we already knew about in trees so that you could train the markers to be associated with that. So we had around 1,500 trees where we went and measured wood quality, and that was many days to, you know, really to make sure that the, the markers that we've used in this program really do pick up the, the wood quality traits that we're interested in. So it's a big commitment then, and what inspired Forico to, to actually get involved? The largest proportion of our plantation is eucalyptus nitens, and we have an internal breeding program and we've got some really, what we think, very good genetics in there. And we're really interested to maintain, I guess, what we would think of as a leading advantage by uh, utilising this technology to help us identify elite individuals within that population. The, the process that we went, sort of went through was initially you need to train the markers. So that kind of alluded to those 1,500 plants where we had wood quality traits already already measured 
And then we look to see which mark is associated with um, plants which have sort of high values for those traits. What you can do is go on and screen blind in populations and look for a similar pattern of markers with the hope that the markers can provide insight into the wood quality of those unknown plants, therefore um, helping you identify, hopefully, the elite individuals. We've taken plants from that screening process now into our seed orchards as part of our breeding program. But, but we won't know for many years, because we're looking at wood quality traits, those markers stack up. And so throughout all of that, was there anything that stood out or surprised you? I guess one of the things which became apparent was that the markers appear to be quite accurate in their associations compared to other methodologies. So the marker accuracy was encouraging. But as, as I say to this point, we haven't been able to validate those associations. The plants are just young plants. They need to grow for sort of five to seven years before we can measure the wood quality traits. One of the ongoing challenges for us now is to work out how we can best incorporate that technology into our breeding program. And associated with that is what is the value of, you know, economically, do we do 100 plants a year? Do we do 1,000? Do we do 10,000? And um, under those scenarios, what are the genetic gains that we can expect to make? And then how does that relate back to our bottom line? So it all, eventually it all comes down to economics. And at the moment, the challenge for us is to work out the best way to integrate that technology into our business. It sounds a positive initiative to be able to contribute towards. Yeah, that's exactly right, Sam. I come from a background in material genomics space and um, all the breeding programs for wheat, for example, in Australia, all use marker technology. I'm quietly confident that the technology will translate into, into trees, if not in the short term, certainly in the, in the longer term. Aside from the clear advantages in identifying quality seedlings, we wanted to ask Robert whether this research has any other implications for the industry. Yes, there are all kinds of things that this technology can now assist with. Sometimes a, uh, a tree will pollinate itself and those offspring can be inbred. Before uh, we're able to look at a, a tree's DNA to determine with accuracy what's really going on, you would have no idea as to what, what had actually happened with those trees and that er an error like that would embed itself in your breeding program and, and never be found until maybe 10, 15 years later when your plantation performance starts to drop. But now the, the DNA gives us a fantastic window into what's really going on with the tree breeding and the tree's uh, true potential. So it also lets us help protect a plantation against diseases by preserving the genetic diversity in the plantation. What it also lets us do is help companies with due diligence. So if they're planning on purchasing a forestry asset, we can help them validate the strength of the genetics in that plantation before they commit to significant investment. So what would you say are the main and most significant outcomes from your research? And what does that mean for the future of the industry? The main outcome would be being able to predict a tree's performance just using the DNA. That is a, it's a very significant breakthrough. It's great now that we can also support traditional tree breeding with a lot of the benefits that come from that single DNA test. It's the first time that anywhere in the world anyone's been able to predict the performance of trees while they are seedlings using just a, a DNA test. With these accuracies, we can now halve the breeding cycle, which lets us double or even triple uh, the gains that are, that are possible. Financial modelling now suggests that for each dollar invested in deploying this technology, companies uh, will return $8. I'm interested to know what feedback you've had from other people within the industry who weren't directly involved with the project. Feedback has, has been excellent. We've been fielding queries worldwide uh, all the way from Kenya to Uruguay. Okay, and so what's the next step? And how long before this research starts to be applied practically within our industry? Locally, we are still supporting industry partners in their, in their breeding programs. 
While internationally, uh, a number of companies are actually undergoing demonstration tests with us to validate for future deployment. We've recently announced a, a multi-year partnership with New Forest's Southeast Asian assets, so it's full steam ahead for us. Congratulations on the research. It's been fascinating to learn a bit more about it. And for any of our wood shatters who'd like to learn a bit more, uh, jump online and visit gondwanagenomics.com.au. That's it for this episode of Wood Chat. I hope you'll join us next time. 